Hello! In this episode, I'm going to be answering a question that somebody asked on one of my other videos, which was basically how to use an arm texture within a standard material. Now, for those who don't know what an arm texture is, it's basically the ambient occlusion, roughness and metalness textures all crammed into one and distributed by the RGB values of the arm texture. So if that's not making sense just yet, you'll, it'll make sense later on. So anyway, let's make a start. So I'm going to be using this rusted spade from Polyhaven, primarily because we've got this metallic part of the spade and this non-metallic part of the spade here. The reason for that is because in the previous video which this question stemmed from, there wasn't actually anything within the metalness texture, it was just an empty black void. So I've decided to go with this object just so we can see what the metalness texture is meant to look like within the arm texture. So what I've done is I've selected zip and I've gone with FBX and I think by default it was something like this, maybe normal DX was on, I don't know. But I've purposely disabled um, this one because we don't use DirectX within Cinema 4D, but we do use OpenGL, so I've kept the um, GL option there. Now with the ARM texture, which is this one here, um, ARM being the acronym for Ambient Inclusion, Roughness and Metalness, I'm going to set this to EXR. That's because by default we had the metal and rough here set as EXR. So I want to make sure I'm matching those as closely as possible, especially if we're going to be relying on this texture completely. So I've gone ahead and downloaded those. And if I just go ahead and open the FBX and greeted with this window, I'm going to keep the settings the same. And then after that, we're greeted with this spade. And you can see a material's already been created and we've got um, some of the textures already assigned to that material. So we've got the diffusion within the color channel. We've got the roughness within the width of the specular within the reflectance. We also have a value set here, which I think has been set by the um, FBX. And then within the normal channel, we've got the normal texture and um, sets tangent and 100%. So we're currently missing the ambient occlusion and the metalness and the arm texture as a whole. So I'm going to disable the normals for now and the reflectance and clear out the color. So we've just got this clay um, spade now. I'm going to load in the arm texture. Here it is, arm. Just so you know what we're dealing with. Okay, so we've got this multicolored um, texture here. As I mentioned earlier, the red channel contains the ambient occlusion. The green channel contains the roughness and the blue channel contains metalness. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we can extract those individual RGB channels so we can get access to those individual textures. Um, before I do that, I just want to make sure that the color profile is set correctly because we're dealing with EXRs and we're just using the raw information from um, this texture, not the visual aesthetics. I want to make sure it's set to linear and doesn't seem to have changed so I think it's set to that by default which wouldn't surprise me because cinema is quite clever when it comes to those things okay anyway I digress there um, let's minimize everything so we're back to normal okay so in order to split those channels how I would go about it is by using the colorizer so by clicking the colorizer it's automatically set the texture to black and white and we've still got the texture within that colorizer but the input is set to luminance by default. What we're interested in, we're interested in, are the red, green, and blue channels, because the red contains the ambient occlusion. As you can see, we're getting dark parts here and up here, which is where the ambient occlusion should be applying dark parts. So that's good, that's working. And then in the green, we have the roughness. This looks about right, there's nothing Nothing notably concerning here. And then in the blue, we have the metalness. Now where it's black, there shouldn't be any metal. And where it's white, there should be metal. So this is looking promising thus far because you know, the handle was wooden and the spade head was metal. So that's how we split the channels or how we can split the channels. So I'm going to copy that just so we've got it in memory because we're going to start applying the um, start applying these channels in the right places. But for now, I'm just going to clear this, set it back to how it was in the diffuse and start 
pasting that colorizer in the appropriate places. So first of all, we want to be dealing with the ambient occlusion. Now there's two ways that I can think of off the top of my head which we could, um, and how we could address this. The first one, not the ideal method, but it does the job, is by creating a layer and using colorizer. And then within the texture, we get the arm texture again. Set this to red. Multiply because the ambient inclusion was in the red channel. That's why we set it to red. And if we turn it around, toggle this on and off, you can see it goes darker where it should go darker. So that's good, it's doing its job. And you've got a slider here if you want less ambient occlusion or more. So that works, it, it does what it should. However, I think there's a better way of doing this. So I'm going to clear this out, bring that diffuse back in. So back to normal. And then what we're going to use is this diffusion channel here, which is basically going to do the same as what we just did. Make sure this is set to red for ambient occlusion. Um, but we just get additional parameters to work with should we want them. So if I turn this off, you can see it turns off, turn it on, you get it back. And it does the same purpose as what we did before, pretty much. If you want to know more information about it, you can right click texture, go and show help, just scroll up to the diffusion part, and you can see here we've got a nice little graphic which demonstrates what it does. And it also explains underneath the diffusion page lets you darken and lighten the material in specific areas using a diffusion map. In our case, ambient occlusion. Okay, so we've done the ambient occlusion. Um, the next part would be the roughness, which we saw earlier on. Um, we turn on the normals as well. So we go back to the reflectance with that enabled. Here's roughness. What we can do is just replace that and make sure the input is set to green for the roughness. Um, so that's that, pretty much done. Now the last part is the metalness. Now how I would go about doing that is by creating an additional reflectance layer and kind of treating that as somewhat like a separate material. So I'm going to stack that over the top. I'm going to use a GGX. You could use any of these pretty much, but I'm going to go with GGX. And then under layer Fresnel, I am going to set this to conductor, which would be what you'd normally use for metals. I'm going to increase the IOR as well. Now that's just a value which is default within Redshift, so it's not really a specific metal value. However, you do have some presets here if you do want a specific metal, and if there's nothing, if the one that you're after isn't listed within these presets, you can always search online for um, the specific indices or index of refraction of a specific material, should you need to. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to use these settings, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is where this metalness is being applied. So in the layer mask, we're going to paste that colorizer. I'm going to make sure it's set to blue. And it is, as you can see, the handle is no longer metal, but the spade head is. Although it is admittedly a bit too shiny, so we'll deal with that in a second. So that's pretty much how to, well, how I would go about um, using the arm texture within a standard material. But just to finish off, I'll just sort out the roughness. So within the roughness of this new um, metal texture or reflectance layer that we created, I'm going to paste the um, colorizer within the texture of the roughness. Go inside, make sure it's set to green for the roughness. And then here you do have artistic license. You can have it as rough as you want. Um, so just get a bit here. Better, better angle. So you see you can make it more rough or really shiny. However, I'm going to go with the values which were provided with the FBX because I have a feeling those are the values which were intended for this sort of thing. However, you know, you have a full artistic license, you can do what you want at this stage. But I'm just going to follow what was provided. Okay, so that is how I would use an arm texture within um, a standard material. Now, that isn't to say that is the way to do it. I don't know if there is a specific standard way to use an arm texture within a standard material. However, um, that's how I go about doing it. I've not used a standard renderer in a long time, like several years, to be fair. So what I've done may be a little bit outdated. Um, 
you know so if, if, if anyone out there watching this thinks what I've done is wrong in any way or slightly outdated please let me know in the comments below because I don't want to be spreading misinformation but based on the experience that I have had using a standard renderer for several years in the past this is how I would have gone about um, approaching the arm texture so I hope this has helped I hope this has answered the question which you were asking um, hope this has helped anyone else who may have had a similar sort of question yeah uh, hope to see you in the next one see you for now